What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another Missable Details video. Today, we're going straight to the story with all of the pain and suffering and supposed death. That's right, we're talking about Count the Ways. More like, count how many references there are to literature. There's a lot. Guys, I had to read the entire story again for this video, plus a load of poems. <laughs> and you're in luck, because I made one for all of you. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Make sure to subscribe and like the video too. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave the poetry to the poets. <laughs> anyway, let's get straight into what you missed in Count the Ways. Before we even start looking into the story, there's already a piece of literature referenced in the title alone. Count the Ways is a reference to the Elizabeth Barrett Browning poem, How Do I Love Thee? With the first line being, How do I love thee, let me count the ways, and the last line being, I shall but love thee better after death. A possible weak implication, but this could imply an ending to the story with a death, which of course we're unsure about, it's an ambiguous ending, uh, but if the story does follow a, a same structure to that poem, then it could be bad for many. It's good to mention that this poem is also mentioned in the book. Now in this story, there's a lot of characters that have names that appear in other stories. Millie's father is in fact Jeff, but I don't think it's Jeff who works in Jeff's Pizza. Uh, Millie's uncle is called Rob, like the father in, in the cliffs, uh, but the wife is alive and they have two children so they can't be the same person. One of these children is called Hayden, who you are obviously aware is the father in, in coming home. <laughs> Again though, it's a child, so I don't think they're the same person. There's also Hannah, who is uh, Millie's best friend in high school, who shares a name with Matt's ex-wife in In the Flesh. Yes, I know I may be taking this too far, but this is what FNAF is all about these days. Let's not forget Millie's crush Dylan, like the bully in Into the Pit. I honestly think a lot of these names are just throwaway names and in a way, red herrings, but at this point, you can never be too sure. <laughs> okay, enough about stupid names. Now the story is actually told in two different times, but for the video's sake, I'm gonna be going through the events in chronological order. So firstly, we understand that Millie doesn't exactly like her name. She was named after her grandmother Millicent, while her cat was named Annabelle Lee, after the girl in Edgar Allan Poe's last written poem. And there's actually a big connection here. In the poem, a girl called Annabelle Lee lives in a kingdom by the sea, and the angels in heaven were envious of her love with the speaker. So they summoned wind, which caused her death. However, their love is so strong that even through Annabelle's death, their souls feel so connected that not even angels or demons could separate it. And even just talking about souls here, you can already see quite a big connection to Five Nights at Freddy's. It's possible this piece of literature too implies the death of Millie, but still the presence of her soul after dying. This actually comes back up later too, when Grandpa mentions when his wife died, uh, people tried to set him up with someone else, but they couldn't because he knew that she was the only one for him. Speaking of death, Millie actually mentions that someone may have died in her granddad's 150 year old house. It could be possible that this soul is what possesses Funtime Freddy, and when you think about it, it is weird that Funtime Freddy knows Millie's name. Maybe the person who died knew Millie, or maybe it was an effect of agony, but it's something to consider. In fact, on the next page, it is mentioned that Millie's grandmother died before she was born. Do I think the grandmother is the one that's behind all of this? Absolutely not. Millie is a goth girl, and we know she fantasizes over death, which makes sense, as her favorite singer is Kurt Carrion. Carrion meaning the decaying flesh of dead animals. I know, sorry vegetarians. Millie. She has a poster of his album cover which is called Rigor Mortis, and from my knowledge of linguistics and, and French and Italian kind of vocabulary, I can understand that this has something to do with death, <laughs> from the word mort is. This in fact means post-mortem rigidity uh, in Latin, and is the third stage of death where the corpse's limbs become stiff for a few hours. They stiffen, uh, kind of like a creepy effect, um, so not, it's kind of like the effects, the features of a zombie, you know, like Michael Afton, maybe. Uh, the album cover has Kurt with his lips curled back, it's hard to speak like that, to reveal metal fangs. Uh, reminds me a lot of endoskeletons in FNAF, but these, uh, these details alone are very creepy. She reads some poems about death, 
Again, reading Annabelle Lee and another from Edgar Allan Poe called The Raven, which you could argue is similar to the Blackbird in the story Blackbird, which is funny because it has a similar supernatural plot. Both are about losing a loved one and trying to deal with it in your life, and a supernatural blackbird tormenting you over it. However, it does still have similar themes to Annabelle Lee and therefore connections to Cat the Ways. Another poem that she reads the first time is by Emily Dickinson about a date with death. It's not explicitly mentioned, but this is probably referencing her poem Because I Could Not Stop for Death. Uh, in this poem, the speaker rides in Death's carriage through a whole lifetime, starting with when she was a child, and comes to a stop when they get to her grave. I think it's a poem that makes it look like this story is about Millie remembering what came before her death. I did find the th format of the story weird, uh, where she keeps coming back to the present with Funtime Freddy and the past with her bad memories. Uh, it's possible that what we read is in fact all happening in Millie's brain as she panics in the cavity. But one more detail that could be something is how she points out how she thinks of death as a, a handsome figure like Kurt Carrion, but also a black cloaked figure which only leads me to think of the Stitch Wraith, which is described by humans as simply a hooded figure. Some of the pieces of literature are also mentioned later on, including Dracula by Bram Stoker, H.P. Lovecraft and The Call of Cthulhu, and once again Edgar Allan Poe, and his Tales of Mystery and Imagination, which is a collection of his Stranger Tales, uh, and one is called out directly, The Fall of the House of Usher, which has a lot about isolation, which is how Millie feels a lot throughout this story. This changes when she meets Dylan, who compliments her black teardrop earrings. I got a little scared here because black teardrop tattoos uh, mean the person has committed a murder, <laughs> but it's not a tattoo, so we, sh we should be fine, we should be, we should be good. Dylan then gets her to read The Lottery by Shirley Jackson, and when she finishes it, her mouth hangs open over the ending. Now, I decided to read this short story, and my god, it's basically its own Fazbear Fright story. It completely gave me the chills. So, to keep the story short, they do this annual rite in town called The Lottery, uh, with 300 people and 300 paper slips. One of these slips is marked with a black dot, and Tessie complains that she was rushed through the process, um, but nobody really cares. At the reveal, we find out that Tessie has the slip with the black dot, and the townspeople right, start to pick up the gathered stones and throw them at her while she screams about the injustice of the lottery. This story is mad, and I kind of hope that Fazbear Frights uh, stories were based off of this kind of literature because this is fantastic. The whole premise of this story is that people don't need a reason to be cruel. If a large group of people are already doing it, then they'll start to behave in the same way. It's actually called mob psychology, uh, and I looked into it a little bit, and it's really interesting, so you should, you should look into it if you're interested in that sort of stuff. In fact, this might be what leads Millie to not celebrate Christmas later on, not only because of the fact that she she's a goth girl and she doesn't celebrate all these happy festivals, but she mentions that she's not going to celebrate it because it's just what society tells her to do. All of this is just to emphasise how Millie finds death romantic, and it's such a prevalent theme throughout the story. Back to the world of Count the Ways and you'll notice a contrast here with Dylan. The two get along really well in a dark gothic setting, but they are split apart when they are in a fun, bright and loud Christmas fair. When Millie and Dylan are talking about books, it seems everything is in her favour and she is on a date with Dylan. But when she sees him holding hands with someone else at the fair, it seems everything around her is against her and she wants to go on a date with death. This in fact is prevalent throughout the whole book, where she doesn't fit in with brightness but feels better in darkness. A bit like vampires, which is ironic because she gets called Dracula's daughter. Now Christmas Eve and the family are around and Millie decides to hide in the garage where it's nice and warm. She spots a mechanical bear which is clearly Funtime Freddy and she mentions how it's big enough to climb into its body cavity, which could make sense. From sister location he's 6 feet tall and I calculated that his chest cavity is probably about 
5.8 cubic feet, which could be the size of a large cardboard box, so I like to think that a teenager could fit in there. Millie actually points out how it could have been one of those things from those old kids attractions, and here she is most likely is referencing Freddy's, meaning this takes place way after the events of Freddy's. But I would like to know how her grandpa got this. It's possible he could have worked at one of the locations in the past, and that's how he got hold of these animatronics. Remember, however, this is one of the animatronics from Circus Babies Entertainment and Rentals. So I, I think it could have come from the same place Eleanor came from in that scrapyard. Funtime Freddy mentions being brought here by her grandfather after finding him in a salvage yard, so I think it's totally possible. Millie crawls into the Freddy just to stay there for a while but appears to fall asleep and wakes up to Freddy's voice calling her Silly Millie. Strangely before any of this even happens, Millie rhymes her name with Silly at the start of the book, possibly a clue that everything that happens came from her mind. Negative thoughts about herself for being unsuccessful, talking to death through the fear of it, quite literally trapping herself in her own thoughts. I think it's unlikely that she made Funtime Freddy up, but I do like the parallelism with her getting trapped. A few odd details here that make more sense in this context is how Freddy actually says the word DEATH with a capital D, implying he is talking about a physical manifestation of death as a person, and this continues throughout the rest of the book. But he also mentions how she's in the belly of the beast, which is a saying meaning that you're in a very bad situation. That could be why Millie then refers to death with a lowercase d, because as she mentions, her dates with death are fantasies, while she is seeing the true reality of death in the moment. Two different kinds of deaths. Now you may or may not have picked out that Funtime Freddy knows a hell of a lot about death. He talks about how dehydration leads to organ failure in a few days, starvation that depletes your nutrition, storage over weeks, and electrocution that can make your heart go into fibrillation. Fib fibrillation. <laughs> He even has knowledge about Vlad the Impaler and the Forest of the Impaled as well as the dentist Alfred P. Southwick who designed the electric chair and Henry VIII who made boiling alive an official punishment during his reign. Even how Mary, Queen of Scots, had to have three hacks of decapitation because the blade wasn't sharp enough. I think it's safe to say that Funtime Freddy knows a bit too much about death and history to be an ordinary robot. Interestingly again, Freddy tells Millie that kids at school call her Dracula's daughter and her parents are from Saudi Arabia. How does he know that? I think it's clear that something strange is going on here. Either the origins of Funtime Freddy and the effects of agony or the possibility that Millie is tormenting herself in her own thoughts. Don't forget that Millie fell asleep before Freddy started talking to her. Maybe it's all just a dream like we see in Pizza Kit. Or something a little more sinister. What if Funtime Freddy was created or reprogrammed by Grandpa himself to give Millie the wish that she would never stop talking about? The wish of death. I like that theory a lot. And I'm gonna leave you with that thought too as the end of the story shows Funtime Freddy slicing the cavity and doesn't tell us whether Millie dies or not. I think personally from the reference literature and the whole theme of the story that she does die in the end. And I think it would really create closure. It's kind of a sad story when you look at it though, but also for me an underrated one. After rereading this, I actually really like the plot of the story a lot more than I first thought. Anyway, Thank you guys so much for watching. Tell me in the comments below what story I should cover next. But for now, make sure you subscribe and I will see you later. Goodbye.